All right, so Shell and I are going on a road trip tomorrow. We are headed to Havasu, Lake Havasu City. We are taking this here big block down to my cousin Merlin, old school garage. He's gonna build this thing for us because I don't have time and he's really good at it. And we're also gonna take transmission out of the FJ. We're taking a wiring harness, a bunch of stuff. We got a long day of driving tomorrow. We're getting loaded up. This motor sitting in there strapped down and away we'll go. Hang on to it so it doesn't skid and bend the fan. this sucker I don't think so I think we did if we didn't we're about to we're about to grab that thing <laughs> okay you ready yeah that's not bad looking train fluid either it shouldn't be it only ran for freaking 30 seconds we got issues I don't know what's going on but it ain't happy. Okay, go get a bunch of rags and we'll stuff them in the back of that so we don't have to deal with it leaking on us. Okay, that's fine. Just jump in that truck and back it up here. All right, that's a load. We'll leave in the morning. All right, so it's morning. We're on the road. Shell's getting a little shut eye over there. Lando's in the back. We're headed to Havasu to pick a motor up. We're trying to get everything all handled for the Easter Jeep Safari. So we got a long drive today. It's gonna be like a 12 hour round trip. It should be exciting. Lake Mead, we are here. Last time I was at this lake, me and Michelle weren't even married. We floated down the Colorado River that and came out of this. the last time we've been here? The last time we were at Lake Mead was, we went on a river trip. The reason we went on a river trip was because Michelle was working at a little ranch called the Bartend Ranch. And that's where the river rats get on and off the river for the Grand Canyon. So if you guys ever get a chance to go to the bar tent and go down one of their river trips, do it. And you'll get to see some kids singing and dancing. That's what Michelle did there. Yep. We cooked and cleaned and we worked our tails off. And then at the end of the night, we put on a show. It's in like, the middle of nowhere, right on the Grand Canyon. It's pretty cool. It's the last time I've been here. And then we got stuck at the airport. Yeah, that was a fun trip. Long story short, my brother was supposed to pick us up and then he didn't. And so we were too young to get a rental car. So we ended up finding six more people and there were actually grown adults that could rent a van and we all went to St. George in it. Some old lady had cookies in her purse when we got stuck in the gorge. It was pretty good. Update. We've been on the road for about five hours. We think that we just got past Kingman. So we should be at Havasu in like 38, 38 minutes. miles. Minutes. Miles. Minutes. 38 miles. Exit right to Arizona 95 South. In one quarter of a mile, turn left to South Highway 95. This trip was much needed just for the mere fact that it is 70 degrees here. Very nice. Oh. I'm ready to take this hoodie off already. This time of year, I think it's perfect. I'm have to come back in a few weeks and go uh, bass fishing. It's about that time when they'll be on their beds.
is it 70 here? Oh my no. god. How does that feel? How oh, does that feel? It feels so good. Your me? last snowstorm, we were 88, 87 degrees. It was like <laughs> 22 degrees this morning when we left. Ooh. I remember oh, what that was bad. like. Oh, it I just so remember bad. what it was like. Is that like. why? You, why did you move here? Let's talk about that. Because we were driving in here, and so, I'm like, what brought Merlin to this place? Five miles south of Glendale, where Paul grew up, is where I grew up. A little town called Orderville. And one winter, I went to leave. It took me almost two hours to get my little Chevy Love truck running. By the time I get my little Chevy Love running, the snowplow comes by and plows a big old drift up in front of the driveway, and I gotta bash through this snow. And I get stuck in the snow, and my dad comes out, and he laughed at me. And I told my dad, I says, I will never live where I have to heat my house with firewood. I lived in Southern California for 15 years, and we used to come to Havasu a lot, and I realized it doesn't snow here. So when I, when I watch Paul on YouTube, and he's wallering in the mud in the snow, I just giggle because it's like, it's so nice down here. Is that funny? <laughs> it's uh, it's just reality. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, we were Googling it a little bit, but why is the London Bridge here? Well, after World War II, this was actually called Site 6. And um, it was in relationship with Kingman and the Ford Proving Grounds and a lot of places here in the desert where they trained these people to go fight in World War II. There was a guy that came here. His name was Robert McCulloch and he built the McCulloch Chainsaw. And Robert McCulloch was looking for a place to move his chainsaw factory. So he looked into this land and he found out that he could actually get it from the state of Arizona for no charge. All he had to do was sign a contract that he would develop the land and turn it into a small town. He needed an attraction for people to come here to the desert. Robert McCulloch's friend, C.V. Wood, got together with him and said, you know what? We're gonna design a town that's kind of based after Disneyland. C.V. Wood had found this London Bridge in, in London, England. They took it apart, they numbered the bridge, all the, all the rocks, they took it apart, and they literally put it on a ship, they took it down through the Panama Canal, it came into Long Beach, and then it was shipped by truck and rail car here to Havasu. It was laid out over several acres, and they literally reconstructed the bridge. So it's kind of cool. It's grown wow. into uh, a little oasis in the desert. Yeah. And it attracts a lot of people in the wintertime because they're trying to get out of the snow where you guys yes. are freezing your butts off. Yeah. So there you have it. All right. Well, beautiful beautiful London Bridge. Yeah. Well, we brought you some junk. You drove a long ways to bring me some junk. Let's see <laughs> what you got. It's junk right now. Ooh, this is out of Lando's truck. Yeah, this is the one that had the cam problem. I recognize those cylinder heads. Yeah, they're, they're top quality Speedmaster. It's going in the tow truck. It may need different heads. These aren't the best heads for that situation. So you know what big blocks and Dana 60s are for, right? Yeah. Lead-footed hillbillies. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm after. Got a Turbo 400. Ooh, look at that. There's an LS harness. There's an LS harness. Nice. That's going to solve Landon's truck problem. It's got a sniper on it right now. So. That will be the most beautiful thing ever. You just have to, uh, you'll have to do some tuning on it. Yep. Merlin came up with a great idea. Did you eat? I haven't ate. Let's go eat. I, I can always eat. Yep. Let's we'll deal with it. this when we get back to lunch. I've seen you eat here before. My friend used to own it. That's a little truck that I built. How is it, boys? Very good. It's good. He already knows how it, it is. Like, uh, Mine's delicious. Yep. Yeah, it's good. Well, I'm excited to go see what's in your shop. I've seen lots of Instagram posts on it, but I've never actually been in it. I actually have a gift for Paul that's going home with you. Ooh. You, you thought you were dropping a motor off, but you're actually taking another one home. Ooh. And I told Merlin the rules. Oldest gets shotgun. And he's older. That just means you have to get the gate. <laughs> Look at this! Wow! So Merlin's old school garage. Hey, I've ridden in this before. Woohoo! 30. We got a whole 30. Yeah, we, uh, we broke the sound barrier in that. We Pretty got sure. That's the fastest that automobile has ever been, by the way, Michelle. <laughs> and I was there. The Guinness Book of World's Record is looking at that going, that can't be right. Uh, 
So before we go unloading that, because I actually have a stand, we'll just free this stand up with this little silver motor on it here. That would be you all can, right. You can take that home with you. I got a place to put that. Oh think, yeah. You think you could use that? I think there's a 42 Chevy up there that would love that. Oh yeah. That's cool. What is this exactly? So it's a it's a 350 Chevy. Okay. It's nothing really special. So it'll probably run on 91 or 93. Okay. And uh, it just happens to have your favorite carburetor on it. Oh yeah. So something I did with this, I bought this blower from a guy here in town. He put it on his hot rod and it overheated. That is one thing you're gonna want a lot of radiator because these things build a lot of heat. Okay. But I kind of upped it a little bit here because this blower drive is from the big block blower that's on my little coupe. If you'll look, there's a pulley here. This little six rib pulley oh, yeah. used to what be what drove the blower. So they turn it slower, but it slips. Yep. So then what we do is we put this smaller pulley, we spin the blower faster, we put 10 ribs on it, and now it doesn't slip. Now it's good. Now it makes power. This is perfect because I'm pretty sure the consensus of the channel was they wanted a blower motor on it. Yeah, that was pretty much it. What everyone said was blower motors, so. And it's got the right power steering. So you have a long water pump in it now. Yep. This works out perfect. This trip turned out real yeah, good. this trip's awesome. And then I think block cuggers will fit down in it and I can put the mufflers underneath instead of out the sides that'll, how they that'll are. That'll be really nice if you can tuck that in. And yep. You'll need a nice big exhaust on it. Like you'll probably want to almost do three, three inch, inch clear out. Yeah, because that's the problem with a blower. A blower motor will actually pack so much air in and create so much heat, you've got to get it out. And the only way is through the exhaust. Honestly, yep. like I think just, that you should just come on up to Glendale and I'll tell you help what, him. when the mud dries out, <laughs> and that, that, the mountains aren't white anymore. I'll be right up. Okay. Yeah. We'll hold you to it. This guy's a freaking genius. So these are two frames and he flipped them. They're two identical frames and he flipped one upside down and welded it back together right here. So that's how it has that arc in the frame. Land, come here. Look at these rear ends and tell me what you can tell about them. The, this diff pan is flipped on that one. So one's upside down, right? Yeah. Exactly, this back one's upside down. Why would he do that, you think? Forward. Because he's gonna come off the back side of that rain gear to turn this one. He's gonna, I don't know how he's gonna do that, but you guys should probably watch him because that's gonna be involved. So it's what cool. would you call this? This is a childhood dream. That's what I would call it. <laughs> I love it. It's a it's a 33 Dodge Brothers, but I'm making it out to be a miniature semi truck. So everything about this truck, you're gonna be able to find things that can relate to a big semi truck. It's gonna have air parking brake, it's got an auxiliary transmission in it, it's got a diesel engine in it, it's got three axles that are both two or two of the two rear ones are gonna drive. It's gonna have a fifth wheel plate. It's just, everything is gonna be scaled down and miniature. That's awesome. Like everything, I'm like, that golf cart is awesome. Look how squishy the seats look. Out of everything on that golf cart, you pick a <laughs> squishy seat? Okay, so now, now you've brought up the golf cart. Michelle, you gotta come go for a ride in this golf cart. Okay, don't kill me, I've got kids. It's a golf cart. Because I'm guessing that it goes fast. Nothing, nothing around here is fast. It's a golf no. cart, Michelle. Yeah, but I know Merlin. Where are the seatbelts? <laughs> <laughs> I told you it went fast. It's got a diesel engine. Oh my in it. gosh. Was I right though? The seats are squishy, huh? Seats are squishy, Michelle. <laughs> that was a good observation. But we yeah. drove uh, Grind Hard Plumbing Co.'s little Barbie Jeep thing. Yeah, that thing's pretty fun. Yeah, Holy cow. Really I'm like, you could die. So when I was in Southern California, yeah, I worked for Doug Thorley for a short while, building headers, and he introduced me to Keith Black. They actually gave me some really good advice, and I'm gonna give Paul that advice right now, because this is his first supercharged engine. Paul? Once you go supercharged, you can never go back. Because it will always feel like going backwards. Once you burn alcohol in a motor, you can never burn gasoline again. Once you burn nitromethane, 
it's over. That's the top of the shelf. When, when Paul grabs the throttle on this motor and revs it up, I want you to see his smile. <laughs> You'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, are you ready? Yeah, let's fire this thing. Woohoo! There she went. Awesome. My gosh, that's louder than your derby car motors. Well, yeah, that's my derby car motors with a blower on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought those were loud. You think that'll do a burnout? Oh, yeah, I think we can manage that. <laughs> I love it. That's probably a burnout. Oh, oh yeah. That's going to be so I think cool. Doran and David will like this, too. Oh, yeah. To finish off that truck. Yeah, I'm sure they never had the full potential of what I'm going to do to that truck in their minds. That truck's going to be cool. This will definitely be a really nice compliment to that little truck. Yep. Yes. This motor's going to be awesome in that truck. I can't even wait. Merlin was right. Oh, yeah. Look yeah. at your face. Yeah, there's a... You could feel that. Could you not feel it in your chest? Yeah, That's blower stuff. I you went just, deaf, uh, too. Yeah. It's a trade-off. Hearing for horsepower. <laughs> yeah, when it hits you right here, yeah, you know it's something. How do you even ride in a truck that's that you loud? You put mufflers on it, sort of. Somebody sent me some one chamber Flowmasters this big. Yeah, I'll they're put, single chambers, they're I'll, called 10 series. I'll put those on it, they're three inch. Yeah, do you want to hear a set of those? Yeah. They sound really, really, really good. Oh, cool. And they're three inch. Merlin's got everything. <laughs> Doesn't that make you smile, Michelle? Oh, yeah. Wow. Here's the deal, though, Merlin. What? Everything is super organized right hey, back here. When like, you I'm operate impressed. in the cubic inches I have here, not feet. Seriously. You have to be organized. This isn't like junk. It's like all of it's good stuff, and it's all organized. This, so Paul just asked blocked. Landon, what did you ask him? I asked him what this motor was. I was what kind of motor this was, because it does not look like a normal Chevy motor to me. And Paul's like, well, what is it? I already know from the big valve covers it's a big block of some sort. I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, insight on it. They only made it a few years. It was actually developed for NASCAR. They only made two sizes. Was it a 427 big block? Nope. It was Beach a, Boys this, made a song about it. This was before. I don't, have you ever listened to the Beach Boys? I don't think I have. <laughs> this, this been, I love the Beach this Boys. This would have been before the 427 big block. I know this it. Shell knows I this. know it. This is just called, because you said the beach voice. See? It's you a know 405. <laughs> no, it's not. 405 is a freeway. <laughs> it's a 409. 409. 409. I was oh, close. Geez. It's called an elephant. Let me think that that's all that he has back oh, here. Yeah, it goes on. There's more. Yeah, see, I told you. But the wait, guy, the guy there's more. But wait, there's more. <laughs> For just four ninety five, you can have this tire, them two by fours, that transmission. But wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> see, you complain about me stashing all my stuff. There's my front end. Oh yeah, S ten or. Oh yeah. This isn't the one. This no, isn't oh, the no, boat. Oh no, this isn't smoke on the water. Oh, this is... that boat's that boat's special. It's in storage. This is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I would never. This is never powered boat. Ride in that one boat with you, just so you, you know. Think? You think? <laughs> now that sounds. Like I would never ride yeah. in this boat with you either. I don't know why open headers make you smile, but they just they do. do. They just make your day. <laughs> Every single time. If I hear that noise, I'll drive to wherever it is to see what we're Just to see it. what's going on. Paul's dad and my dad, they like to poach firewood. Let me tell you how you poach firewood. The BLM sells a permit, one cord of stacked wood. I think it was a competition between my dad and Uncle Sherman to see who could cut the most wood on a single permit without getting caught. <laughs> we were on Cedar Mountain and it was snowing. It was October, so we're trying to get as much wood cut as possible. The permit says dead and down. That means the trees have to be already dead and on the ground. So my dad goes off one direction and Sherman goes off another direction and they're just falling trees because next year those trees will be dead and down. And we're sitting in the trucks with the heater on like we want out. We're just little kids. We start heading out towards the highway 
in two feet of snow, loaded with wood. This is not a stacked hoard of wood. This is heaped over the cab. I mean, we're losing sticks of wood and we're not picking them up. Like we're just, we're, we're getting out of here, right? The left front wheel on my dad's truck breaks off. We're two miles from the highway and it is snowing. It is blizzard conditions. All I could think is now what? We got to go walk in the snow. We don't even have snow boots on. Sherman and my dad cut a wedge and they put it under the left front wheel because there's no left front wheel on my dad's truck. Sherman hooks onto him with his truck loaded with firewood and they drag it to Todd's Junction. <laughs> the moral of this story is don't get greedy with how much wood you want to poach. Oh, I thought the moral of the story was going to be don't give up. You can make it to Todd's. Well, that's that's where Paul gets a lot of that from because yeah. his dad never did give up. Yeah. Know? Sherman was something else. Uh, why is it leaking then? There's some residual fluid in it. <laughs> That's right. Good. Yep. Yeah, it should be a That's gonna good be, little motor for that truck. It's going to be a kick in the butt. Well, we traded one shiny motor for another shiny motor. That is 100% true. Stay. Right, uh... <laughs> There's the brakes right there. We're heading back to Utah, right, man. Paul. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Let us know it. the damages that Landon caused. All right, oh, good luck Paul. with that new motor. <laughs> That's going to be fun. That's going to make me smile for days. We'll have it put together for the car show up there. It'll be done. Hey, it was we'll good see seeing you. Right. See you, see see you later. later. Just left uh, Merlin's old school garage. He's got some cool stuff. And this little motor that he hooked me up with is gonna make my truck fun. That, we're gonna have a good time in that little truck. We're gonna have to do some stuff to it. It's not set up for the horsepower that this is putting out. We gotta redo some rear end components and power steering, brakes are going to need some work, but going to be fun. Fun build. You guys stay tuned. It's happening. Six hours to home. We decided since we're in Lake Havasu, we might as well drive across the London Bridge. Got it. What do you think, Lance? I think it's a good idea. We just rolled in from Havasu, like 12 hour, 13 hour round trip. It's been a long day, so we're home. Thanks for watching. <laughs>